All right, hi everyone. Happy to be here. I uh, hope you're having a good conference so far. I'll be talking to you today about uh, enhancing security with Istio and uh, real-time access revocation. Um, I'm from Aki Companies, Josh Oberdick. Sorry if I didn't say that at the beginning. Real quick primer, in case you're not familiar with what JSON web tokens are, or JOTS as the cool kids like to say, uh, it's basically just a way to package information as claims into a verifiable, tamper-proof um, entity that you can trust uh, what the information that's inside of it. Uh, the reason these are so popular uh, is they can be very lightweight. Uh, most languages these days, most programming languages support this out of the box. And uh, the, the biggest advantage that really I think that, that gives the popularity of, of JOTS is that they're stateless. So we can have them uh, verified even if a token issuer is down, let's say. So let's say your token issuer is unavailable. If you're signing your tokens with uh, a key set, that key set can be cached at the CDN layer, and you can validate these tokens as they come in to your applications, even if you can't reach the original token issuer that it gave. Uh, this also gives a great performance advantage because that same cacheability can also be done at the application level inside memory, which often happens in the SDKs that you can do this for you, so at maybe every five minutes they would cache, and that allows the client to hit an application with a bearer token and even a million times a second, that token does not have to be uh, validated directly to the token issuer. It can be done in memory inside the app. So all this scale gives uh, a great advantage, right? But, but, what, but all, with all tech, there's always uh, pros and cons and trade-offs. So what's the catch here? Basically, we have the ability to, for unlimited scale of our tokens. We can uh, validate them offline and as many times as we want but we can't revoke them. So this means that if an expiration is baked into the, the payload part of the token, uh, it's not revocable. It's there forever. So the good with the bad. So you might be asking, you know, what, you know does this really matter? Is that important? Well, I think your security team probably thinks it's important. Uh, you know, you can imagine events uh, such as a compromised account um, or someone leaving a company uh, we need to remove their access immediately, not hours from now, right? So if someone has an application open on their device and they have access tokens, we want those to not be usable even after they are issued. So uh, that's the main reason, I think, why you care. Okay, so if we care, what happens if we had our app teams try to solve this? Um, and this is just kind of a, a theoretical concept here of like all the challenges with asking your app teams to revoke a token directly. So, you know, you would maybe tell your app teams, okay, everybody, we're going to start integrating with our uh, token issuer. You're going to have to start making a callback to uh, validate every single token. And then you're going to have to make sure that your team can do that consistently without any issues. And um, if you have a large team or a large organization, you have to be able to orchestrate that, uh, you know, without knowing for sure uh, if that's being done correctly. So that brings a lot of challenges with, you know, the teams might need to cache, how are you going to handle failure, um, what's the latency this is going to induce on all your apps. So, you know, as you scale this, you have many of them all pointed back to a single endpoint potentially, and you're, you might have different languages uh, throughout your environment, so creating an SDK might not be very practical. And so what you actually end up getting is something more accurately, I think, is this, where you don't really have an assurance that it's being done correctly um, or consistently. So let's talk about how we would actually want to solve this with Istio. So let's say you have Istio, Istio proxy sitting in front of your application and you have a request authentication and authorization policy as I'm showing here. This is just an off the shelf policy that gives uh, Istio the ability to validate the JOTS for you and now your application is removed from that process, right? So let's make Istio do the, the heavy lifting of, of validating the token. So if you're already validating the token with Istio, now let's talk about adding a layer um, that gives us a better security than what we have just out of the box. So the first thing we want to do is we want to create a log stream from our token issuer to what we're going to call an events hub in this case. And so what these events are, basically, if anything that you care about that might change the posture of um, an identity uh, accessing something. So say a user logs off or a user's disabled, 
those are commonly logged in a token issuer. And it's very common, too, to have a log stream ability in those token issuers where you can send logs to a place that you want. And in this case, it's an event hub that we will use to distribute um, elsewhere. So as those events are flowing to the event hub, we're also going to put a revocation service into each cluster to consume those events. So it'd be like a pub sub model, a fan out, um, event streaming, pick your flavor of whatever platform that you're um, wanting to run for that. But eventually you would get those events into the memory of the revocation service so that it's local to the cluster, readily available to understand if there's some kind of event that might change the access level of, a, of an instance of an app. So then the, lastly, we add an authorization policy, an external authorization policy more specifically, to your Istio proxy. And now that gives you kind of this full circle um, of where if a token is coming in, not only is the Istio proxy validating um, that that token is genuine, but it's also doing a double check against this revocation service that it can then override and make a decision that might change whether or not that token is not just expired or not, but maybe we're gonna make a, an exception and say that it's not allowed even though it is technically valid. So in order to do this, you really just have to uh, put in a couple things into Istio itself. So the first thing is a mesh config, which is a global configuration inside the Istio mesh that registers an external authorization service so that it's eligible to be used for these decisions natively in Istio. And you see there's also some options for, fail, for failure um, and timeout, and so because we're still keeping the existing auth in place, which is an important concept here, we're not changing the auth that we originally had in place, we're adding to it, so the option to fail open is, is a business decision and one that you can make with your security team, and the timeout that also you're willing to wait for these decisions to happen. So then we just need to add an authorization policy to our applications that's of the action uh, custom, and that then will reference that same external service. And now you basically have a secondary layer of authorization around your service that gives you the ability to check beyond just the token's um, lifetime. The other important thing to note here is, um, you know, if you're deploying this for your apps, we use Helm exclusively. And so instead of running around asking your app teams to deploy an external authorization, or even having to add this YAML, this would be included as a part of the Helm package that they deploy with their application, and then they just get it by simply incrementing the Helm version that they're running. So if you scale this out, it looks kind of like this, where you have a revocation service in every cluster, and let's say you have a user of 1234 that's already logged in, and it's using an application, and it's passing that access token as a bearer token on the header to the Sistio proxy, and it's working as expected before we enter any of this new information. Then let's say the user is disabled in the token issuer. Some events happen that's caused someone to take action to do that. So that, that user ID is then sent off into the events hub, which is then broadcast to all of the revocation service local to each cluster. So then it's already in, that's in memory as, a, as part of a list, basically a deny list that's in every cluster now that says that user one, two, three, four is not allowed. So when that token comes to hit that external authorization check, it is going to deny it based on that, not because of the fact that it's still technically a valid token. Same thing would happen is if they move to another app that they were using at that same time, because we've distributed this across all of our clusters, it doesn't matter what app they go to, we have a consistent um, protection against access that we do not want to have happen. So the other benefit of this is we can also load up information from other external security tools beyond the auth provider, you know, such as you know, analytic tools, AI tools that are looking at behavior analysis and you know, whatever else your security team is interested in and can send events to this as well to override access um, in a decentralized way, but it's still centralized uh, logically. And what this gets at is really the idea of continuous access, if you've heard of that phrase or other tools. Um, I, I, do, I want to give credit to that um, kind of concept and project is that this kind of is one of the layers of, of zero trust that you can build um, to, to constantly evaluate the access of your users in real time. So the advantage of this uh, is no changes to your apps. Um, so Istio native, as we just showed, the, the policies are very simple to at least uh, put in place. Um, you can roll this out gradually. You leave, your, you leave your existing auth in place. You do not change it. Um, it's an additional layer 
because we're putting these revocation services local to each cluster, we can achieve lower latency. Um, and it is decentralized, at least in the concept of how the, the networking is structured, but it also um, reduces the, the blast radius that comes with that. Um, things to keep in mind, this custom type of authorization in Istio does come before any other authorization policies, so you need to keep that in mind. And uh, canary and locality-based routing is currently not supported um, in the ex external authorization uh, policies. Um, shout out to, to Microsoft and, and anyone that works on the continuous access evaluation project um, and shared signals, uh, OpenID Foundation, that was a large inspiration for how we achieved this. Um, thanks to my, my uh, colleague Matt Williams for only building um, the services that we deploy to the clusters. Uh, quick demo if we have time. I was going to do this live, but then realized it was probably not wise to do so. It took me actually four times to do this, even here at the con in the Wi-Fi, so this was for the better. Um, real quick, what you're looking at is an Insomnia client that's hitting a local endpoint that's running on my cluster, and um, it's currently denying it on a 403 because I'm not providing a token. I have the base authorization already in place, and so we're going to... Uh, Asami lets you authenticate as a user to get a, an access token, so that's what this is going to do here. So you're going to sign in as a user. Um, I'm using a personal Auth0 account for this example, but you can use any Auth0 compliant provider for this if you can. So now we're sending the response with the token. You can see we're getting 200s from the service because now we have a valid access token in the header. And so what we're going to do next is disable that user on the Auth provider. So this has nothing to do with Istio directly or the token is not changing, but that event now has been triggered, and if we go look at the kind of the logs, just to kind of show that quickly here, is we will have um, an event that shows that that user has been blocked. So blocked is true. So if we go back to our cluster, we now have a 403, and that's because the external authorization service received that event through the eventing system, and now that external authorization is overriding the fact that we still have a token that is valid, but it is not considered valid in this situation. So now we can actually go back and unblock the user. Likewise, if you build that same kind of functionality in, um, maybe it was an oopsies, or maybe there was the risk is over, so let's allow that user back in. So in a few seconds here, um, this isn't a production environment, but uh, eventually see after a few tries, we do get the 200 back. So we went full circle and we were able to unblock the user. And that's all I got. Thanks, everybody.